Hello, I'm here today to talk about Gloomhaven, which is another video game based on a board game. And this is a video of the game that's kind of kind of an open world RPG. So it's a board game that's kind of not copying but influenced by open world RPG video games, and then this is the video game of the board game of that. Uh yeah, I should really talk about the board game. This cause this is a this is a big game. So I'll talk about the board game. So the, wait, I, I've not played the board game, but I've, lot, I've watched a lot of videos of it being played and it looks really cool. So with the board game, this is the box. Fucking monstrously big. And when you open the box, you get all this stuff. Uh, these, these boxes here, these are where your characters are or information about your character. So, uh, and they, they all have these symbols on. These, these boxes contain miniatures of your character. So you open one of these boxes in the corresponding miniature box and you get a bunch of cards and, and, and I assume a sheet telling you how your character plays or whatever. Uh, but all you've really got to go on is these symbols. Uh, and I think maybe a name might be a name on the box, but essentially these symbols. So you just, uh, if you've not read, I mean, you can go and re read and see what all these characters are. But assuming you've not done that and spoiled it for yourself, you just open one of these boxes and you get a character. And then that's your character for the game. Um, you can unlock characters later on. Part of Part of what's great about this game is that it's, non-linear you do you sort of do missions you do dungeons uh but the path that you can take can be different and you get different rewards depend, depending on how well you do uh so different things can unlock so you can unlock different uh, characters you can get more cards for your character as a card based combat game essentially so anyway this is the box it's huge the, these are your characters um this is like how you lay out the dungeons so you know each each time you do a mission the manual will tell you to how to lay out the dungeon and like these are your enemies and stuff uh so yeah that's what you get in the box and uh yeah these are these are the character boxes which i just think are really fucking cute uh you know you're just like oh this is like clearly some kind of roguey throwing bladey thing that'd be up my street so i'd probably open this one Maybe you'd open this one or this one and you, you open it and you get your character and that's, yeah, that's, that's your character. That's your character you play. Uh, so when you open, so if you open the, that one, you get this little fella. He's cute, isn't he? A little rat man. He's called the Mind Thief. Uh, he's pretty cool. Uh, here's some people playing the game. So there's a dungeon. They've got their cards. Their, yeah, so it looks, looks big and complicated, right? It's not actually... that. It's a very it's a massive game because, like I say, it's this open world where you go from point to point you do a dungeon or a puzzle dungeon or an encounter or whatever, and then, you know, you choose where you go next and that kind of thing. Uh, so it's a massive, massive game. But the, the actual combat is simple, uh, and I'll get into that in a little bit, but also sort of very deep, very strategically deep. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's people playing the game. This is, this is the map. This is like the This is a terrible picture, but I couldn't find a good one. This is the overworld map. So there are lots of locations on the map marked by these little things. Uh, when you go to a location in, in the physical board game, you put a little sticker on the map, which is really cool. But when you unlock a location, when you visit it, you're supposed to like cross it off or whatever. Uh, there's a prosperity tracker for how prosperous the town is, I think is what that is. And then at the top, you've got, uh, you can put stickers down when you get certain achievements in the game. So it's like, it's taken a lot of influence from video games, right? Um, yeah, lots of physical stuff to play with, which is, which is cool. Uh, and then these are the, the meat of the game. These are, these are the cards for that Mind Thief that I showed you. These are, I think, the starting cards. Uh, as I say, you can pick other cards up later. Uh, what's, what's really sort of clever about the way this game works, the combat in this game, is that the, these are your cards. So when you go into a dungeon, you start with all of these cards. Um, you can play two cards on your turn, uh, and you play the top half from one card and the bottom half from another card. Now you have to pre-select, because you can play this cooperatively with other people. Uh, you pre-select which two cards you're going to play this round, but then when it comes to your turn, you can you can say you, maybe you intended to play the top half of this card and the bottom half of this card, but things have changed because people have done stuff, so you do it the other way around. You play the top half of this one. You know you adjust to circumstance. Uh, but when you've played these cards, they're discarded. So on your next turn, you've got fewer cards to work with. So you know if you use your big attacks on your first couple of turns. You're not you're not doing a great deal for the rest of anyway. So so yeah, the cards are discarded, and then your next turn you'll discard two more cards. Now you can take a rest. I think there's I think there's a short rest and long rest, and I think one of them uh, you get uh, you get all but one cards back, uh, and the one that's discarded for good for for this dungeon is chosen at random. 
and then if you choose the other kind of rest where i think i, I forget the difference but something like you can't you can't do an action for so long uh, you choose which card is discarded so you can sit out around and get get your cards back and you choose which one you don't get back so anyway yeah so what you can see is as you go through a dungeon through a mission uh, and this applies to you know if you're playing cooperatively with other people um your what you can do is just constantly d- diminishing so you've got a plan for that and that's that's kind of really cool uh that's all the images so let's go to the actual video game game so what i've just described uh in the board game is going to be what's the campaign in the video game and that's not in yet that's going to be in when they release from early access it is an early access game see that there uh but they do have this guild master mode and i i can't really tell how this is different from the campaign mode it seems like the same thing you do a mission you you unlock a thing and you can go to it i think this is i might be wrong about this and people who played the board game might correct me but this just seems like a different campaign this guild master mode but anyway so uh, I'm not far in. I've not played a great deal. Uh, where's where's the one I actually want to write? This one, okay. So I'll just show you how the video game 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 plays. So I've just done I've just done this mission. This I'm basically like right, that's all I've done. Right, I've done the tutorial. The tutorial is excellent. It talks you through all the rules of the game, uh, how to play, how to more than how to play, more to how to think about situations. You've got to get your head around how this game works. Uh, so I've done the tutorial, which ends up putting you there i think and then i've done one more mission uh where i unlocked another character and then i'm about to go here let's travel if all this and enter the dungeon Right, there we go. Meet the meet the spell. Oh, I'm gonna have to change um something over on OBS here. Bear with me. I was, I was capturing desktop, uh, and as soon as the game proper started, it didn't like that. So I've, I'm capturing the window. Okay, so I've got the spell weaver now. Uh, don't know how she works. Uh, a powerful but fragile magic wielder who, who can harness the natural elements of the world. Okay, so I'm going to find out about the um, that stuff, which I don't really understand yet. Oh yeah, I'll sort of skip through this, and I'll just I'll just sort of play badly a little bit. Uh, so you can rotate the middle mouse button. Oh, this is okay. So this isn't a proper mission. This is just meet the spell weaver. Okay, so the game's so because this is still it's still kind of tutorializing me. It's uh, giving me things to do. So can sh- so so the ice in this level is something like this. There's different elements, and they can be powered up by people's actions. So there's a lot of ice in this level. The element of ice is strong, so I can, I, I as a spell weaver, can make use of that. That's my understanding. That might be a little bit wrong. Um, these are my cards. So the cards are just represented here. Uh, obviously, you can mouse over them and, and get information. So yeah, top half, bottom half, top half, bottom half. So I've got three cards. I've got to choose two of them and use top half, bottom half from blah blah blah. What I said about the uh, board game essentially. So consume ice power to uh, consume ice to power up freezing nova and use a jump move to survive the round so i've just got to survive the round okay so consume ice so i want something that consumes ice which i assume yeah so that consumes ice uh they don't and they don't so I, i will be using that card and now i want something so that's on the top half so now i want something with jump on the bottom half which is that one so end selection so then the enemies take their moves, or the enemies take their cards at least. So now I want to target all adjacent enemies and immobilize, and then consumes the ice. So that's great. I'll do that. Uh, we click on that, yeah. So that will actually consume the ice, otherwise it hurts them less. Okay, so I'm consuming that ice that's built up on the level to uh, do that. And confirm targets. And boom. Hurt everybody. That's pretty cool. And then these are all um, melee dudes. So now I've got to jump somewhere where I can't be hit next turn, I guess. Use a jump to move to survive the round. So jump. How far can I jump? Where can I jump? I've just got to survive the round. I don't know where it's good, really. We jump over there. Wee. 
ball. Oh, then I then I can move. Do I want to move? I'm supposed to like exit or something. We'll uh, we'll skip and it'll tell me it'll tell me if I've done it wrong. And spell weaver's done. Oh, because they were immobilized, weren't they? So yeah. By consuming the ice element, freezing Nova dealt three base damage instead of two, knocking out the three bandits and applying the immobilized condition to the bandits that couldn't so they couldn't chase after you, please. Oh, 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 yeah. Great. Cool, cool, cool. Thank you, tree face man. Uh yep. He's just telling me what I did. Uh Spellweaver has a very powerful trick off her sleeve. Many other powerful cards may burn after usage. But the top half of reviving Ether allows her to return all of her burn cards to her hand. Getting the timing right in this one, recovery, blah, blah, blah. So she's got a mechanism for recovering cards by the look of it. I uh, uh, probably should have read that because that just says kill the remaining bandits. So, so okay. I, I should have read that properly. I'll recover all your burn cards. Okay. Okay. These are my burn cards. So these are, there's discarded and there's burn. Some cards are burned after use. Some cards are discarded. Um, so I want to get that card back, essentially. So long rest. Choose one discarded card to burn to recover all other discarded cards. Uh, short rest. Lose one discarded card at random in order to grab or recover all uh, discarded cards. Uh, for the short rest. Long rest, rather. By choosing the long rest, you will not be able to select another card for this round. So, do I gamble on getting that back? I've got a 50-50 shot at it. Or do I take the long rest? Are they still immobilized? I don't think they are. Let's get a gamble, right? Uh, okay. So, it's going to... <laughs> it's going to... Uh, oh no, that's the one. Yeah, no, that's the right one, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. So I could, if if this wasn't the card I wanted, I could sacrifice one health uh, to change the redraw essentially, which would mean I get the other card. But okay, that's that's what I wanted. Uh, and then I want to do that and that, I guess, because they're my only two cards. Uh, cool. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Okay, well that went poorly. <laughs> uh, but, I mean, maybe that's enough. Hopefully you get the gist from that. Or should I have a look at the, um, should I look at where the tutorial puts you? But you can see it's like quite strategic with your card, you know, it's managing your managing your hand, managing your deck. What's putting me about that? I'll go back to the, um, uh, I'll show you how it starts. There we go, Guildmaster. I did create a brand new one, so let's load that one. Oh, this is that one. Oh, I'm an idiot. Let's just start a new one. It's confused. New adventure. Uh, normal. Guild name. Om Uh, Yep. Cool. 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 So full tutorial, story intro, or quick start. We'll go. We'll go full tutorial so you can see what that's like. Okay, I'm gonna. I'm gonna click through the stuff. Oh, it's it's interface. It's interface tutorialing me. Uh, select trample. Uh, so it's telling me what cards to pick and for what reason. So I've selected trample. Continue. Should we? That's a, that's a bit too tutorial, right? Let's skip that. Uh, Guildmaster, new adventure. Whatever that says. Uh, normal. Uh, we'll go story intro. Experience the initial story and puzzle quest. Yeah, let's do that. Because if you want to do the tutorial, you can do the tutorial. You don't want to watch a video of somebody else doing the tutorial. That would be dumb. Uh, so blah, 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 blah. Go there. So these first few levels, especially the tutorial levels and that, they kind of set up like puzzles. Like you've got to use, it's, it's teaching you how to use a card. So it, it, it creates a very specific situation where you've got to use the cards in a very specific way. Um, just, yeah, to teach you, to teach you how the game works. And then later on, it will be just like missions where, you know, you choose how you do it and that. Uh, so let's do this. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, okay. They both have an innate shield one effect, indicated by the shield icon. So each point of shield prevents one damage from incoming attack, so I need to hit them for more than their shield. 
Uh, I might have, uh, so if I pierce it, it, it ignores shield. Uh, yeah, I'm going to skip through that. And okay, so um, and I can shield myself. I'm probably going to need to shield myself. I forgot how much. I think he told me how much damage they do. They do two damage. They both do two damage. I've got one health. So I'm going to need some shield. And even with that, I'm not. I'm. I need to do something. So uh, Pierce, so I can kill. How much health has he got? Three. That attack has Pierce. One of them. Back three and two, two Pierce. So yeah. I survived the round by applying shield and using. Oh, it's time to use health potion. Fair enough. Kill a living bones using a Pierce attack. All right. So let's use a health potion. Uh, uh, how do I use it? Or maybe I have to do that on my turn. Okay, so I remember using a shield, so let's. Oh, can we just use that shield? I don't know. So I'm going to use this card. It's got the shield on it. And then my only attack with Pierce is that one. So it's telling me to apply shield and use an attack with Pierce, and I've got to work out which cards do that. Right, so take my health potion. Uh, I'm quite sure how to take my health potion. Oh, I click on it there, not up there. Okay, so that just shows me what's in my inventory. Right, so I click on that. Take health potion. And then I apply a shield. And then I use my attack with Pierce. So I can kill that one or I can hurt that one. So I should kill that one to reduce the incoming damage. Kill that one. Awesome. Now this one's going to hit me. So every time you or monsters... I think it applies to you as well. Every time you or monsters attack, you draw from another deck, which is whether your attack is like minus one, plus one, zero, times two... Um, so these tokens, and they're another thing that you can kind of manipulate. Uh, so he got a plus one, so he did more damage to me. So I can burn an available card to avoid the damage, I can receive the damage, or I can burn two discarded cards to do something. What is that? Uh, what is the infinite damage? Oh, burn one available card versus two discarded cards. Okay, I'm going to receive the damage. Because I will live. I did not realise he was going to hit me again though. I'll still live. That's fine. Oh my god. Um. Uh, I die right if I uh burn one. What's that card that I've got available? Don't know. Burn both of those. Oh wait, I can. I can use my shield. This is a problem when, uh, when I don't read it. I'm too good. I have two discarded cards. Why isn't it letting me do that? Let's just receive the damage and see what happens. Yeah, I thought I got a shield up, mate. Well, I did that as well. Okay. I was actually reading. I'd probably do better. Uh, but I'm not. I'm going to make the same mistake again. So what did I do wrong there? So I got a shield ability, a pierce ability, and I don't know. I, I don't seem to be able to use those. I think that happens on my turn. So let's we'll see what I did wrong. Right, my turn. So use healing potion. Done. Shield self. Done. I've got the shield. I don't think I have to do anything with the shield, do I? And then kill this fella. Right. Drive the round by applying a shield and using a health potion. I've done that, haven't I?
We're burning hard now. Okay, so. Oh, ability cards. Oh, is that what that is? I thought they were. Anyway, fine. Okay, so it looks like I had to choose to use that shield because. I don't think I've burned any other cards. Uh, right, so kill, kill the blah 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 blah. I can attack for it, so that's not going to kill him. Uh, let's do a short rest. Uh, that's fine. Now I want to try and kill him in one turn, and he's got six health and one shield, so that's not going to happen, is it? Is it? Oh, I can push him onto the traps, can't I? So, push two, that's what I want. So, that's the top half, so what's the best bottom half? I mean, probably that one, same that one, let's see. Uh, continue. Okay, so let's attack him for two. And then push him. Push him. Him. Uh, is that all I need to select? Yeah, there we go. Wait, I didn't push him. Oh, now I choose not to push him. Okay. Let's push him through both of these traps. Uh, as you can see there. Lol, fuck you, Skelly Bob. Yeah, so as I say, these uh, these initial missions are laid out sort of like puzzles. Like you're in a very difficult situation and you've got just the right combination of cards to get through it. I didn't quite understand what I was doing with the shield thing because it's been a couple of weeks since I played the tutorial. So I don't really know what I'm doing. Uh, but yeah, that's that's the gist, and it's it's a cool game. The whole the whole choose two cards and use the top half of one and the bottom half of another, but it doesn't matter which. It's cool. Plus plus the whole thing where as you go through a dungeon, you are discarding cards, uh, and there are doors in the dungeon, and uh, you, like you know at, you know how doors work. When you before you open the door, you don't know what's behind it. So when to open doors is kind of a strategic decision. There's also chests and loot on the floor, like money and uh, chests. Uh, but to in order to loot things, you need to use an ability. Uh, you, you can't just like go and pick stuff up. You have to use a card to loot and stuff like that. So it's yeah, it's all very it's all very risk versus reward and blah blah blah. And you can always you can retreat from missions. Uh, and like I've heard it said by people who played the board game, often often you will uh, you know if you just you can't do a mission, um, you will just dodge in, get the quest, uh, get the chest rather, and then leg it and not bother trying to kill the enemies. And stuff like that. So there's a lot of like strategic decision making. It seems it seems really cool. And I've unlocked something there, some character. Uh, yeah. Well, so that's about it. I'll go back to the no. I don't want to exit the entire game. Let's go back to the main menu. So I look forward to the campaign being in. As I say, I don't really understand why the, how the guildmaster thing is different from the campaign, uh, other than perhaps incorporating a tutorial. I'm not sure, really sure how these two things are distinct. I mean, I know they're they're different campaigns, but this kind of just seems like another campaign. Uh, anyway, yeah, this game's on Steam. It costs some money. I forget how much. Uh, it's Proton, I think. I'm pretty sure it's Proton. I can't tell, which tells you how much that matters. Uh, and it seems good. It seems like a good game. As I say, you might want to wait for the campaign to be in. I don't know. Uh, yeah, it's good. good card-based combat -y strategy game that's a bit more like, a bit richer than something like Slay the Spire. Slay the Spire is a great kind of casual-ish. When I say casual, I mean, you know, you can play it well watching a tv show i don't mean that it's easy it's certainly not easy uh but yeah i think slay the spire is like a, a sort of casual card game this is a, a far more involved thinky you know you might go away for 10 minutes to think about how to use your cards to get out of the situation you're in kind of thing and that's cool 
this seems cool. I've not played a great deal of it yet, but I'm looking forward to playing more of it. I'm getting to the point where I'm just babbling, so I love you. Goodbye.